Imagine an alternative past where this technology, fusion, became reality. A past where science and innovation created a robot-enabled utopia, free from menial labor and filled with the pursuit of knowledge and, uh, be um, beauty. Whew. This never seems to play out too well in the video games that envision it, but it is fun to think about how grand advances in technology could change all of our lives. So, what is cold fusion? And how would it change everything? Now entering the facility. The alternative past of Atomic Heart begins with this weird stuff. Polymer, a plastic electric storage device. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this stuff would really be in life, but it has to do with silicon and heavy water, a fusion fuel. Now, it's polymer that then allows fictional Soviet scientists to take arguably the game's biggest technological leap, creating cold fusion. And you know what? This cold fusion bringing about the glorious robot revolution in-game makes sense. Wait, you haven't been talking to those robot twins, have you? No. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've, I haven't been... No one's even noticed those characters. Fusion is the holy grail of power production. The main reason is simple. Outside of antimatter annihilation, fusion is the most energy-dense process there is, thanks to direct mass-to-energy conversion. For example, a single kilogram of fusion fuel would release the same energy as 10 million kilograms of coal. And fusion fuel, heavy water or hydrogen with extra neutrons, is found naturally in seawater, meaning that there's more or less an unlimited supply of it. Fusion is also clean. It doesn't produce any greenhouse gases or significant nuclear waste. And yeah, no, no, no. Not having like a face doesn't really matter to me. I think the whole chrome look is actually kind of hot. Hot fusion is what everyone normally means when they talk about fusion. Nuclear forces at nuclear scales are so unimaginably strong that it normally takes star-like conditions to force even light nuclei like hydrogen and helium together into a different element. But this is not the kind of fusion that Soviet scientists in Atomic Heart are talking about. No, they're talking about fusion without star-like temperatures. In fact, fusion at the temperature you're at right now, room temperature. Now, if that sounds unbelievable, you're not alone. Because it turns out, experiments with cold fusion are some of the most infamous experiments in the history of science. Why are these AI liking all your Instagram posts now? I, I don't know, Aria, maybe they just think I'm a cool guy. I can't control what they do with their shiny hands. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. I'm award-winning science educator and Thor, if you squint, Kyle Hill. You know, I research a lot of weird stuff online here at the facility, how to reconstruct a zombie virus, whether or not zombies actually have souls. I need a real shark behind me while I surf. The sponsor of today's episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premium virtual private network service that encrypts all of your information sent between your devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, change your device's virtual location to access YouTube in Nigeria. Surfshark does not monitor, track, or store what you do online. That means no connection or activity logs. And unlike other premium VPNs, Surfshark now has thousands of servers in over a hundred countries. Be secure on the majority of the Earth's surface. Use the offer code KYLE for 83% off from now until the end of the year and three extra months free. You're welcome. There's a money back guarantee and you get an unlimited number of devices on just one account. While you're surfing, protect your turf, Surfshark. All the way back in the 1920s, scientists Frederick Paneth and Kurt Peters discovered that the element palladium could absorb hydrogen. Specifically, powdered palladium could absorb a lot of hydrogen gas, 900 times its own volume, which would put this hydrogen at thousands of times atmospheric pressure. Because of this chemical fact, Paneth and Peters believed that by simply loading palladium rods with enough hydrogen in the form of deuterium, the pressures alone could cause fusion at room temperature, cold fusion. 
When they detected the fusion product helium in their experiments, they were apparently successful. However, Paneth and Peters later retracted their claims when they realized that they were measuring background helium in the air and not from nuclear catalysis. A few years after Paneth and Peters, Swedish scientist John Tanberg used the experimental setup you see now, electrolysis of heavy water with palladium electrodes, to try and get electricity to force even more deuterium into the metal, thereby increasing the pressures and increasing the likelihood of fusion. In 1927, Tanberg reported he successfully fused hydrogen into helium and applied for a patent. He couldn't explain why the fusion occurred, he just claimed that it did. His application was denied. Cold fusion would then stay cold for another 60 years. Even though there has never been an accepted theoretical model for how nuclear fusion could occur at room temperature, in the March of 1989, two men would spend an enormous amount of time, prestige, and money in making their names synonymous with failure. You know they don't actually exist, right? Yeah, I know they're not real. I was just inspecting some, the hardware and seeing if it was uh, shaped correct. What do you want me to say? If you've ever taken a science class, there's a good chance you recognize these names, Pons and Fleischmann. And that's because in 1989, the two electrochemists pictured here announced to the world that they had generated excess heat and energy from an electrolysis palladium heavy water experiment, that they had achieved cold fusion. And not with some fancy reactor at the temperature of a sun that costs a billion dollars. No, simply with what you see them holding right there, the power of the sun in the palm of their hand, allegedly. Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons made international headlines in 1989 with this device, a reimagining of the original electrolysis apparatus proposed 60 years prior. It too used a power source, heavy water, and palladium electrodes. During experiments, the duo would run this apparatus for weeks at a time, using a calorimeter to measure heat and replacing the deuterium fuel every so often. Suddenly, and without apparent explanation, the heat coming from the device would almost double. This was unexplainable, Pons and Fleischmann would claim, if nuclear processes weren't involved. The duo also publicly claimed that they measured tritium in the water and neutrons leaking from the device, similarly pointing towards nuclear reactions. If these claims were true, it is undeniable that these two men would have instantly changed the entire world. Free, unlimited energy for everyone, forever, and in a device that could fit into basically anything, this could plausibly, in fact easily, bring about an alternate history like you see in Atomic Heart. A similar thing happened with miniaturized hot fusion in the Fallout universe. However, the problem is, science doesn't take anything at face value, not without proof. That's how it's constructed. And for Pons and Fleischmann, the presentation of their proof was the problem. Just, just don't pay attention. Just don't pay attention to it. Don't, you don't have to answer. Just. The instant Pons and Fleischmann made their announcement in March 1989, the whole scientific community was skeptical. Remember, there was no theoretical basis for any of this to work, and so any world-changing technology had to have substantial experimental replication behind it. Problem was, Pons and Fleischmann didn't initially publish how they actually did their experiment. And when they did, other scientists found that the reported excess heat was one degree Celsius, not 20. And this could be explained by experimental error alone. And when physicists started digging into Pons and Fleischmann's data, they found that those neutrons that indicated nuclear processes and fusion, well, that was just a wrong measurement. There were no neutrons. In the weeks after their announcement, almost every single scientist looking into this failed to replicate Pons and Fleischmann's initial experiment. And it should tell you just how wrong these two men turned out to be when just a month after their announcement, even the mainstream media declared cold fusion dead. These two men would have changed the world, and it would have been amazing. Yes, 
But as legendary physicist Richard Feynman once said, and every scientist should remember, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is. It doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Pons and Fleischmann never officially retracted their claims and instead moved their research efforts overseas after they were dismissed in the United States. Today, cold fusion is a term synonymous with scientific pipe dreams, hyped up failures, and pseudoscience. Look, I don't blame the men for wanting to almost delusionally change the world. Who wouldn't? The problem is, science doesn't care about what you want to be true, only what is true. That's why you have to play something like a cool video game to experience an alternate version of the way the world works. Until next time. Until next time. Aria? Did you block their number? Yes, I blocked their numbers. I love you and only you. You know that forever. Okay, now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join us at the facility, if you want to get nerdy with your special white lab coat that we used to sell but we don't anymore, and you want bloopers, you want videos early, you want private members only live streams with me and private Discord channels, whoo! You go to patreon.com slash kylehill and you join the facility today. And if you support us just enough, like all of these lovely people, you get your name on Aria, who I love very much and more than anything, and I would on Aria each and every week. And there's so many of you, I don't even know how I'm gonna pass the time. I didn't even mention the more technical ways that Pons and Fleischmann were wrong. It wasn't just the presentation of things that were just outright mistakes. It was literally theoretically impossible for them to be showing what they were apparently showing. If they were detecting neutrons coming out from a fusion reaction, something that would produce tritium, as they said, they would have been getting hit with enough neutrons just from being right next to this thing for weeks that it would have, it would have lethally irradiated them easily. And the pressures that they calculated that the palladium would put the hydrogen under, it was something like a hundred thousand billion billion times too little pressure. So I guess you could say they kind of cracked under the pressure that they could not produce. Ha ha! Pawn slam! Thanks for watching. I guess you, I mean, maybe it wasn't a scheme, but it was Pons E, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll go. <laughs>